This pest profile is on tobacco hornworms. The tobacco hornworm's scientific name is Manduca sexta. They are in the order Lepidoptera and belong to the family Sphingidae. The larva of the tobacco hornworm causes severe foliar damage. The larva are identified by the seven diagonal white stripes on their bright green bodies and a red horn on the last abdominal segment. Larva will have four or five instars and they will grow over three inches in length. The adult moths have a wingspan of up to five inches in length. The wings are brownish and mottled with white, brown, and black. They have light and dark bands on their hind wings. There are six pairs of orange spots along the grayish abdomen. Adults will hover above the flower and sip nectar with their long proboscis. Tobacco hornworms feed on solanaceous crops including tomatoes and tobacco and will even feed on eggplants and peppers. The damage that tobacco hornworms do to solanaceous crops is that they defoliate the plants. We can see that here on this tomato plant where the leaves have been completely eaten away and so all the way to the stem here. The tobacco hornworms will also eat the flowers. You can see that here where these flowers are no longer there. Sometimes the tobacco hornworms will eat the unripened fruit of the tomato plants. Tobacco hornworms have two generations each year. The tobacco hornworms life cycle begins in the mid to late spring when the adult moths emerge. After mating, the adult female will deposit the round pearl-like eggs singly on the host plants. Female moths are thought to lay up to a thousand eggs. The larva will hatch in about five days. They will begin feeding on the host plant leaves. The larva will continue to grow, going through four to five larval instars. They will eat voraciously. This will take about 20 days. When the larva is ready to pupate, it will begin wandering around. The larva will go down to the soil and burrow under leaves or into the soil where it will form a pupal cell. Tobacco hornworms will overwinter in the pupal stage and begin the next generation the following spring. Tobacco hornworms are found throughout North America and are most common in the southern United States. Sampling techniques for tobacco hornworms include looking for frass and feeding damage along the edge of the leaves. Tobacco hornworms can be found in the upper two-thirds of the plant. When sampling, make sure you count all the hornworms on the plant, since there can be multiple hornworms on each plant. If there's damage on the tomato plants, begin looking under the leaves for tobacco hornworms. They can blend in really well, so you have to inspect under the leaves. And there's one right there. And here we have another one. The economic threshold for tobacco hornworms is one hornworm that is over one inch per 10 plants. This is based on the number of hornworms and not the damage they cause. If the caterpillars have parasite cocoons on them, every five caterpillars will count as one because the caterpillars with parasite cocoons feed less. Now that we've found our tobacco hornworm through monitoring, we can 
implement a cultural control method that's used in small gardens and small operations, which is simply just to remove the caterpillar from the plant and destroy it. Several other cultural control tactics that are beneficial to control hornworms are crop rotation and disking when the season is over to destroy the pupa that are in the soil. A biological control method that can be used against tobacco hornworms is called Bacillus thuringiensis or BT. BT is most effective against tobacco hornworms during their first larval instar, and it can be used in organic operations. There are a number of natural enemies that will feed on the eggs and larvae. Hornworms are also preyed on by several species of parasitoid wasps. It is easy to recognize a hornworm that has been parasitized because of the white cocoons that protrude from the larva's body. Using chemical control for hornworms should only be considered when there is severe foliage damage or eating of the fruit. It is recommended to only use spot treatment where parts of the field are being damaged by the hornworms. Select chemical control that is least toxic, especially to natural enemies and bees. For more specific recommendations for chemical control, contact your local county extension office.